practice. The most exciting and fun part of speedrunning. At least, for me anyway. All success in speedrunning is built on the foundation of practice, and the way in which we practice will be the key to unlocking our highest potential. I mentioned in my last video that what separates the top players is the speed at which they learn new strategies and techniques. The mechanism for learning is practice, and so how you practice will determine the speed at which you learn. In this episode, I'm going to tell you exactly how you should practice to get the best results. And as a quick side note, these principles don't just apply to speed running. You can use these ideas to learn other skills as well. The first thing that I absolutely must cover is eliminating downtime during practice. In a normal speed run, there will be some techniques that are much harder to perform than others. And if you want to focus on the harder techniques without wasting time, you'll need to find a method that allows you to quickly repeat each attempt. The best way you can do this is to use save states. Save states will allow you to repeat any technique without needing to get back into position to try again. This can end up making your practice many, many, many times more efficient. One great example is the triple jump in Bowser in the Sky. It is a difficult movement that takes place near the end of the stage. The movement itself only takes a couple of seconds to perform, but it takes almost 30 seconds to reach it. If you fail an attempt, you'll fall to the bottom of the stage or die, meaning that without save states, you could be averaging less than two attempts per minute. With a save state, however, I can do an attempt every five seconds, meaning that your practice is at a minimum six times more efficient. It gets even better when you realize that if you can do quick repeated attempts, you can use your short-term memory to make slight and precise adjustments. A short-term memory only lasts around 30 seconds. So if your last attempt was more than 30 seconds ago, the vast majority of information has long been forgotten. The tool that you use to achieve save states may differ depending on the game you play. In the previous example, I was able to achieve a save state on a Nintendo 64 console using a Game Shark. This isn't always available, however, and you may need to rely on using an emulator. Now, I know there is sometimes a stigma against using emulation for speedrunning, which I can understand. However, as a practice tool, emulators are incredibly useful because of the ability to easily save and load states. Even if you don't plan to actually run on an emulator, Using them to practice specific techniques will help you tremendously. I speedrun Nintendo 64 games, so I had to buy this USB adapter in order to play through a controller on my emulator. Adapters are pretty cheap, but they're basically essential if you want to practice on an emulator with older consoles. Now I want to talk about sleep. We all know it is very important to get an adequate amount of sleep, as being well rested will help with motor function, memory, and reaction speed. However, it is also very important to understand the role of sleep on memory consolidation and skill acquisition. The time you spend directly practicing a technique isn't the only time that counts towards developing that skill. The sleep you get after practicing a motor skill actually continues to solidify the technique, causing an improvement of skill even after the practice session has ended. Studies have shown an increase of 20% or more in proficiency of a motor skill after sleep, with complex skills getting the most benefit. So how do we apply this to our practice schedule? Well, basically, in order to learn a motor skill as efficiently as possible, we want to practice it every day, ensuring that every sleep that we have is contributing to the consolidation of that skill. If we want to spend three hours per week practicing a particular technique, we don't want to spend that three hours on a single day. It is a much better idea to split those three hours down into 30 minute chunks and practice six days per week. So let's compare two different ways of structuring our practice. The first way is to spend two hours on day one practicing technique A. 
Then spend two hours on day two, practicing technique B. The second way is to split up these practice blocks into two parts and practice both techniques for one hour each day. In this example, the second method is far superior to the first. The second hour of practice for each technique has taken advantage of the sleep from the night before. The increase in proficiency will mean a higher success rate of attempts and more accurate play. The more accurate play allows for the quicker development of the correct muscle memory. Furthermore, the practice for each technique is able to utilize two nights of sleep versus one. The benefits continue to compound in this way. And if you're wondering, why don't I just spend three hours every day practicing one technique? That's usually not a good idea if you have hundreds of techniques to learn in a speed run. Time spent practicing one technique is time not spent practicing another. Being aware of the role of sleep after practice is also a great way to avoid frustration. You should never feel as though you need to perfect a technique during a practice session. You have to appreciate the fact that the full effects of the practice are not actualized until hours later, after a good sleep. Once a skill has been acquired, we no longer need to practice it every day. Maintaining your current skill level in any technique requires far less work than the process of learning it. In fact, skills that you already have acquired may not even need direct practice. Your run attempts themselves are usually enough to keep you at a competent level. Now, let's structure a practice session. What I want you to do is choose a selection of techniques that you want to gain proficiency in. For the time being, these will be the only techniques that you'll be practicing. If you only have two hours to practice, choose four to six techniques and spend 20 to 30 minutes on each. Practice only these techniques every practice session, which will ideally be every day. When you become competent enough to include a technique into your runs, remove it from your practice session and replace it with a new technique. The main idea is that you will practice the same techniques every practice session until you have mastered that skill. As mentioned before, you can use your actual run attempts to maintain your skill level at techniques you have already mastered. Avoid the following mistakes. Don't spend your entire practice session practicing the same technique. Repetition has diminishing returns. Unless you plan on practicing for 12 hours a day, I wouldn't recommend spending more than an hour on a single movement. Use your practice sessions more efficiently by including more techniques that you've not yet mastered. Secondly, do not practice random techniques each practice session. Make sure that you select a specific set of techniques and practice them every session until they are mastered. This is by far the most efficient way to learn. Strategically, if you want to see continuous results in your speedruns, you can prioritize the easier techniques first so that you can start to incorporate things into your runs as soon as possible. But whether you're practicing a technique for a week or a month, it's always better to practice it as consistently as possible until competency is reached. Lastly, don't spend too much time grinding a technique that you already have proficiency in. Maintaining your skill level does not require much work and time is usually better spent learning faster and more difficult strategies. Use the mistakes you make in your runs to dictate whether or not you need to refocus on a skill you have already incorporated. Now, last thing I do want to talk about is just the general attitude and mindset that you should have when practicing. Now, what you should definitely not do is go into a practice session thinking that you know how it's going to work out. Uh, you have no idea how long techniques are going to take for you to learn. Everyone's different. Some people might learn a technique quickly. Some people might take a little bit longer to learn it. You don't know that. The only thing that placing an expectation on yourself is going to do is make you frustrated and angry. So when I go into a practice session, all I'm doing is saying, I'm going to practice this technique for 20 minutes. Whatever happens, happens. You have to learn to let go and trust in your own ability to, to learn just through practice. So there's no point. There's no point getting your hopes up. There's no point getting frustrated. There's no point thinking I should have mastered this already. Make the decision to put in the time and that's all that matters. Put in the time 
and you're going to learn it just as fast as you were meant to. And hopefully you can learn to relax and just learn to enjoy the process. So that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Let me know again if you have any questions or comments or feedback or anything like that. Uh, I want you to know that I am uh, streaming as many days as I can right now. So please go to my Twitch channel and follow that. And if you see me on, come say hello and hopefully hang out with us. But other than that, I really appreciate you watching this and I'll see you in the next video.